I would recommend the frequency of testing be probably around 20% of the farm. Um, it's going to change from farm to farm. Some growers like to be a bit more intensive and do 50% or more. But um, yeah, look, if we're trying to achieve 20% year on year, that's great. Um, and then also try and keep it consistent from year to year. So if we're testing in front of a break crop or we're testing in front of canola, just try and uh, keep it consistent so we can compare results from year on year. A farmer or an agronomist will decide what tests they use predominantly around what they're trying to treat, I guess. So, um, you know, if they want to go spread lime, they'll get pH tested. Um, if they want to have some deep ends done for some in-season N and better recs, um, they'll get deep ends done. So it just depends what, uh, what the grower and agronomist are trying to achieve um, will determine what they measure. We determine where we're going to test in the paddock by producing high and low production zones. Um, uh, we either do that by having yield data or some NDVI data in our software program. Um, and then from that, we can go out and set our soil sampling locations to then go out and sample in the paddock. What we should be trying to aim for is more sampling on the interrope. Uh, the main reason being is we want to focus on where the crop is going to be next year, which is more than likely going to be in the interrope. So if we can focus our samples there rather than in row, I think we get more accurate results and recommendations. It's important to take soil tests from more of a site specific view rather than a paddock transect. Uh, firstly, to try and um, identify possible soil constraints. Um, when we can identify them from different production zones, which might be from different soil type or different yield potentials or things like that, um, we can then change our management practices to better treat them.